let's move on to part three of today's session. Um, we often get asked, you know, how can I, how can I get great marks? What are, you, what are you looking for when um, marking these kinds of, of, of research papers? Well, this is, the, um, this is the actual marking criteria, the marking scheme that we use within UCL's um, life sciences division. Um, so you see this, you, you have access to this, um, it's available on, on, through the Moodle site and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's online. But it's indicative of, of marking schemes in any number of universities and, and more generally what, you know, what people are looking for when they assess a scientific article. But we'll use this as our base. And all I want to do is pick out some really um, key elements here. So I've just picked out anything uh, above a kind of, um, uh, from a 2-2, uh, a, uh, a second class, second division um, degree classification. So, you know, this is more what we should be targeting. So a, a second class, a 2-1 degree, an upper second class degree, key point here, that what you're writing should show clear understanding, should include a good number of correct facts with no significant errors. So key to all this underlying, of course, is that you've understood the literature, you've understood the science that you've done, the numbers, the statistics, you've carried it out well um, and um, uh, have, have understood and produced good, accurate information. You know, that's what we expect. That's, of course, what the baseline target is. Now, doing that partly requires selecting, understanding, and citing reliable sources. So relate that back to what we were talking about a minute ago. What else can we pick out here? Again, within the kind of high 2-1 range or, or upper second class degree, structure. Structure is absolutely key. We're looking for a well-organized, a well-expressed answer. So think back to what we've just talked about in terms of this kind of anatomy of a research paper. It's about having a flow of well-organized information that shows a logical progression through your write-up. So structure is absolutely key. And then moving to the very highest <laughs> grades, what are we really looking for to assign a kind of first class degree? Um, key thing here, critical understanding critical discussion of facts or evidence. This is the key thing here is critical thinking. This is what can make a, a, a research paper or a paper that you're um, as part of your degree really at the upper bounds as a first class answer. It's critical thinking. So you don't take things at face value. You consider alternative evidence. You consider alternative arguments. You look at the literature and, and you see who's said, you know, contrasting things. So-and-so has said this, but here's a contrasting argument. You look at everything critically. You look for inconsistencies. And so, you know, this paper said, says this, but I found this other paper that seems contradictory. And this is what I've found. It's this critical thinking. It's, it's, it's all about assessing the strength of evidence. And notice, you know, this right up at these very highest... Um, uh, classes, the highest kind of grades that you can get, which are very, very exceptional, anything in the 80s or 90s in the kind of system that we, the British system marks up there are, are exceptional. You know, that's when we're talking about papers that could be published in the scientific literature, in this peer-reviewed primary scientific literature that we've been talking about. So this critical thinking is, is, is absolutely key for producing reports that are of uh, you know, real scientific papers. So that was kind of how to get high marks, but this need for critical thinking applies well beyond writing a scientific paper and really even the field of, of conservation biology. So come back to this kind of cloud of information that, that, that we're all faced with. And I would say that kind of the most important thing that you will do at university not just, is, is not just learn particular facts, particular theories, be it about conservation biology, about ecology, about genetics, whatever your subject is. It's about learning to think critically and assess information. So we'll always be 
continue to be bombarded by um, ever-increasing amounts of information from different sources, but it's up to you to critically evaluate that information. And I hope that what we've covered today, what I've managed to do, is just place the scientific literature within this broader cloud of information.